Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. So we've got this truck, and it drives along nicely. Does a little jump. But if it hits something, it will start going in whatever direction. We want to keep it on that plane, just like we had before with the barrels. Our car here has its own chip. We'll put our logic into. And we can do the same thing we had for the barrel. So I'll just copy this over here. Check the previous video for how exactly this part works. And then make sure we have the look at rotators arrow pointing in the right direction. So I'll turn on the grid and point it over here. And just with that, it should stay in line with this zero plane. And now when we drive over here, and go over rough terrain, it will still try and get us onto that plane. But it kind of gets into a dead end with all these rocks here. What if we could follow this path instead and go over there? Off a cliff, but you know, you get the idea. So I'm going to turn off that chip and do some different logic, which is a little more complex. First, I've made a path guide. So we have this wall going straight, and then it bends around and follows the path we want our truck to go in. We're going to sense this curve and try and move along it. I made this path earlier, but to give you a little tip on how to get this working nicely and making the wall very smooth, you can use a cylinder that's quite tall, then in the guides use upright to stay upright. And you can use the smear shape tool and just draw really slowly, but you'll probably get these bumps and stuff, which will mess up the detection of the angle we want it to be in. So another way is just to stamp one down, then copy it and keep holding it. Then use left on the D-pad to multi-clone in between them. Use a lot of them and that will make a straight line between them. But if you hold L2 and rotate, all the clones in between will rotate. And make this smooth wall. There you go. A gadget we'll use to figure out where this curve is, is the laser scope. This has a stalk, which we can position, and a length, and a fall off. We'll get to how all those work together in a minute. We can also tweak these with the settings. So if we make it long enough to reach the wall, it's hitting the wall. But this wall has particular settings, so it's not detecting it right now. If we tweak the wall, we can check out the settings it has. It's not collidable, and by default this wants it to be collidable. So let's make it not care about whether it's collidable or not. And it's visible now, but we don't want it to be visible while we play the scene. So we shouldn't care about whether it's visible or not either. Now it'll detect whether it's visible or not, and whether it's collidable or not. It'll detect both. This also has a label of target, so we only need to look for the target label. And now we see there's this little green arrow that's appeared. This arrow is pointing perpendicular from the wall. So at this spot, it's pointing out this way. If we go over here, it's pointing out this way. And it will change depending on what position on the wall we're pointing at. And this is the way we want our truck to face. We want the side to point away from the wall. So let's put this laser scope into our truck. And if we press triangle on the gizmo, it will reset it to be where the gadget is. Then we can move it around into the middle of the truck. And I'll even use the grid to 
have it point exactly across like that. Now it's still finding the wall and we can use a look at rotator and give it that little green arrow's direction. So look at rotator and tweak it. And we're going to wire the direction into this direction input. The laser scope has outputs over here and one of them is the hit surface orientation. The hit surface being the path and the direction being the little green arrow coming out of it. So we wire that into the direction we want to look in and then we rotate this arrow again turn up the settings it's not doing much at the minute but if we move it to where the wall is angling away it will rotate to match it so that the side of the truck is facing away from the wall and if you put it over here turn up the strength a bit because it's got to overcome the friction from the wheels, it's rotating to face the wall again. You can kind of see though that it's adjusting and as it adjusts the laser scope, points to a different point on the wall. So it'll start trying to face this direction, but where it ends up, it will start trying to face this direction. Now if we tap it with R2, that'll set the initial position and we can rewind and it'll still be there. If we move it further away from the wall, we want to be able to drag it towards the wall. We want to move it in this direction. We can do that with a mover. And we want this arrow to be pointing on this side of the truck. So first we want the truck to be on the grid. So I'll just grab it and press triangle and it will be perpendicular to the grid we're using. And we can turn on the grid and adjust the arrow so that we're pulling the truck in this direction. We're quite far away from the wall so we want the mover to do its thing. At the moment it will just pull the truck in this direction regardless of the angle of the truck. But if we turn on local space, now as the truck turns the arrow will turn with it. So we adjust this arrow again. Now it will turn to face the wall and the mover will move us towards the wall as well. I'll just give it more strength and damping. But it doesn't care how far away we are from the wall. It will just keep on going. We can figure out how far we are from the wall with a laser scope. So I'll copy that one. And now let's just adjust this to be roughly where we want it to be in relation to the wall. And we can adjust the range, the length of the main stalk with this setting. So if we're further than this, we'll drag it towards the wall. How do we know that it's further than this? Well, it won't be detecting the wall. This will be 0%. So if we go and use a calculator, and say, is it zero? If it is, it will send a signal from here and we can power the mover. So now it'll move until it can find the wall and then stop dragging us towards the wall. But now it's too close to the wall. So we can actually use this same laser scope to figure out how far away from the wall the truck is. Not just if we're close or far, but within some range using the fall off. So now the mover won't work because this isn't zero. Because the wall is halfway through this fall off. It's at 31% through the fall off. And if the truck is closer, it's at 80% of this fall off. And only now will it be 100%. And if it's past the fall off, it'll be at 0% and turn on our mover. So we could say if we're here, use the mover to push us away. So when we're at 100%, let's get another calculator. And when we're at 
when the value is 1, which is 100% of the signal, then that will send a signal. And we still want to use our mover, but also use a keyframe to send it in the opposite direction. So we'll give this minus 5 meters per second. And then we power the keyframe as well when we want to move away. So when we're too far away, it will drag us closer. And when we're too close, it'll push us away. Until we get to some range within that fall off distance. So that will depend on the size of that fall off. So if we want it to be more precise, we could say it could be within a smaller range here. And that will kind of bounce a little bit to get it within that range. There's another way of setting this up, which gives us more flexibility. Instead of saying just if it's zero or one, we can do different things depending on the range. Let's use a timeline. And we can give this timeline a percentage. I'll use a value slider to demonstrate. We can wire this into the playhead. And now we give it a percentage through the timeline that we want to be using. So if I just move the mover into here, when we were at one, we had this keyframe turn on. So we can say when we're at a hundred percent at the end of the timeline, we'll have that keyframe turn on. I'll just pin these to the screen so we can see what's going on. So at hundred percent, it will turn that keyframe on and push us away. And at 0%, it will use this mover and pull us towards the wall. What if you had this on all the time and just control the direction and strength and damping if you want to? So here we've got negative speed. We could have another keyframe which gives us positive speed. And use L1 and X between the keyframes to blend them like an animation. So we can move back and forward, depending on the percentage signal that we get from the laser scope. So we can wire that into there or into the playhead and it will find an equilibrium. And when it starts too close, it'll go to there. If it starts too far away, it'll come in and get to there as well. Let's just try making this a little faster. When it's too fast, it will start to bounce around like this because it's trying to get into that small range. If we have a larger range, it's not quite so bad, but maybe still a little weird. So you want this to be high enough to work, but low enough it doesn't freak out. That goes for all these settings. Just adjust them and tweak them until it works just how you want it to. You may notice though that it might hover in midair. That's because it has damping on these different axes. We don't want it to damp on the Y for sure. We'll just let it fall and jump as normal. Let's just try this out driving around the place. Uh, I need it to be a little bit closer to the wall. So I'm just going to adjust the range touch and dial that in. It also has damping in the X and Z, which means it will interfere with just moving forwards. It's like going through molasses. So let's turn those down as well. Or we can turn down the overall damping, which will stop any of the damping working anyway. And now I can drive and jump and we roughly turn to face the wall which is pretty cool and now so that the view follows the angle of the truck i'll use a camera pointer and adjust it like that and because this is in the truck as the truck turns the camera pointer will turn too and the camera will adjust to match 
which seems to work pretty well. And we can reverse and keep following the wall. Whee! Of course, if you fall off the edge of the cliff, it doesn't know where the wall is, so it starts freaking out again. So what we can do is just say, if this laser scope, which is extra long, doesn't find the wall, we can just turn all the logic off. An easy way to do that is have a chip and move all the logic into the chip. And then power the chip when the laser scope finds the wall. Now if we go past the edge of the wall, we'll just fall naturally. Where? And now we've got a method of making any object move around freely, but following a path. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.